In this episode of the show, we are going to take you behind the scenes on the song On the Mountain. It's one of my older songs. My name is Vicki Maris, and I'm the host of the podcast. And with me in the studio, Michael Kelsey and Scott Greason. We are going to be bantering a little bit about the creation of On the Mountain and the inspiration behind it. Maybe a synchronicity or two that happened during the evolution of that song. So come back and join us in just a moment for a conversation about On the Mountain. that has just been playing is the instrumental bed for my song on the mountain i wanted you to get to hear just a little snippet of it to give you some context for the upcoming conversation that you will hear me have with michael kelsey recording engineer and my producer of the album and scott greason who is my husband and co-producer of the album Both of those men have also been co-writers with me on a couple of the songs. My other reason for adding this setup to the content that's coming up is to let you know at the end of the episode, I have included a recording of a practice session of On the Mountain. If you can picture joining us in the living room, That's where we recorded this. I had clicked record on the voice memo app on my iPhone and captured our quartet from our music mastermind, which consists of those of us who co-host the podcast. So it's myself, Michael Kelsey, Scott Greason, and Courtney Von Draley. Courtney is my accordion coach. He is a fantastic music arranger and educator, a multi-instrumentalist, His primary instrument is accordion, but he, like Michael and Scott, play several other instruments as well. What you're going to hear at the end of the episode is the three of us introducing the song On the Mountain to Courtney. So this is his first pass through the song, and you'll hear our three guitars. I'm on guitar, Michael and Scott on guitar, and Courtney on accordion. I happen to have the phone sitting on the dining room table and rather close to the accordion. So that is the dominant instrument you'll hear in the recording, but I still wanted to include it. I just thought you might like a little behind the scenes and how that moment unfolded. It was so... See, I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm holding my heart in this moment as I tell you about this, and I have some tears in my eyes. It was so heartwarming to me to hear a song that is very special to me, very near and dear to my heart, to hear these three men interpret it musically in that moment together and together with me. I'm not going to include the whole recording here in the podcast. I'll get into that clip towards the end of the song and just let it play out until we lift our fingers from the instruments. As you're listening, I feel your connection to us. I really feel that about our world, that we are all connected to each other. And this particular song, there were several synchronicities that happened in the creation of this song a couple of decades ago, and then in the recording of the song here more recently. I realized as I was editing this episode in the studio that This particular song represents some of the first times in my life when I was becoming aware of synchronicities that happen in our life. I've heard other people call them God nods, angel moments, those kind of moments that are just really special. And on one hand, they feel so crazy random. You just go, could that have really happened? And then on the other hand, it seems like they were so beautifully orchestrated and not random at all. Thank you for being here, listening to this episode. Please know that you can hear the studio recorded version of On the Mountain 
out in Spotify and all the many other music streaming apps. It's also on YouTube. There is a video of our group playing on the mountain out on my YouTube channel, which is Vicki Maris Music. And a couple of our musician friends joined us for that particular performance. So you'll hear the beautiful voice of my friend Leanna Atwell and the bass playing of Mr. Greg Brassy. Lots of places you can listen to On the Mountain or watch the video of it. It warms my heart to get to share it with you. Let's go to the conversation I had with Scott and Michael about On the Mountain. I'm glad you guys are in the studio with me this evening to talk about On the Mountain. That song has been on the mountain or been around the mountain a few times. It's one of my older ones. It has, but the story behind it. Okay, so. Okay, that's Scott talking. Yeah. (laughs) So I know a lot of the songs on the album, when we go through our podcasts and the other episodes, we talk about the origins. But this one, this song is very special in that area. The story blows me away. And I think it's worthy of just tell it, Vicki, because <laughs> it needs to be immortalized. And when they hear the song, it's very special when you hear the song, when you know the background. All right. I'll share a little background about it. It's only the second song that I have written. The first one was one I wrote for my high school graduating class. I sang it at the senior banquet with my guitar. I think it was a three-chord song. What was it called? Do you remember? I don't even remember the title of it. Huh. I bet it was about longing for the day that is, and mm, it'll never be again. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah. <laughs> sang at my senior breakfast. So you sang at your senior yes, breakfast, I did. and I sang at my senior yes, banquet? Yeah. Did you sing at your senior dinner? I and- did breakfast, senior breakfast. You did senior breakfast? Mm. Oh, my God. Did you write a song? Um, no. I wish, I wish my songs meant that much like that. I think we were just rocking out and showing off for the girls. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember one of the, the lines from my song. I know it's time for this rock to be rolling and oh, to find wow. out what it's like to be me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Deep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I remember what dress I was wearing when I, when I oh, sang my mine. And I remember thinking, I don't think anybody knows that I started playing guitar. Because I wasn't public about that until that moment. So it was an eye opener for everybody. And yeah. then the next song you write, how many years? <laughs> so so fast forward twenty years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I didn't I didn't write any songs in between the senior banquet song and on the wow. mountain. Wow. And even wow. sold my guitar at one point when I was climbing up the corporate ladder is, in a job in Iowa. And I'm like, oh, I never pick up my guitar, I'm gonna sell it. I so wish I hadn't. Done so, that. as I recall, this was a nice American made guild. Is <laughs> yes. that correct? Yes. Uh, My oh, sister wow. had the gotten longing. it for me. Yes. Yeah. All right, sister. Some guy tell was really happy it. that in Iowa that bought my guitar. But I, yeah, don't have that old guild anymore. Okay, so on the is mountain. Is that what you call guilt free living? It <laughs> <laughs> uh, was funny. I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory as quickly as I can. I have loved ponies my whole life, had a pony growing up. The pony I had the longest, her name was Chappie. She was from Virginia. My sister had gotten her from a family that she worked for and brought her to Indiana for me when I was nine. And lots of story I could tell about Chappie, but I'm going to just summarize it to say that I was always curious about details of Chappie's first few years of her life. She had been in a rescue and she had some quirks about her personality that I spent most of my young youth years learning. It's what spurred my interest. That was a cute little pun there, wasn't it? Yes, Uh, spurred. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever used a spur. My interest grew in natural horsemanship communications and how to understand horses' body language. And all of that stemmed from my relationship with Chappie. Well, I, if you know, fast forward to my life 20 some years ago, and I was doing a lot of work as a photographer, an equine photographer. I was out in Virginia shooting photos at a Connemara pony show. And one of my fellow Connemara pony breeders had invited me to come out and stay at her farm for a couple of days. And she had this beautiful place on the side of a mountain near Charlottesville, Virginia. 
absolutely gorgeous. She had won my photography services in a silent auction a year before. And so we had been trying to figure out when it would work out well for me to come out to her place and shoot photos of her ponies. And so this worked out well. I was going to be in Virginia for that show, drove out to Charlottesville, and stayed at this gorgeous cabin on her farm. And when I say cabin, put quotes around that. Picture a really fancy Airbnb type of a setup on the side of a mountain. And I had the place to myself for a couple of days. And I, well, I love to be, I'm very social, love to be around people, but I also refuel by withdrawing and being alone and reading or sitting out in nature. So this place was heaven for me. And while I was there, these song lyrics started coming to me and I was making some notes about them, but I hadn't really put them together as a song yet. As I was leaving, I was standing on the drive talking to my friend Susan and said, Susan, I been shooting all these photos of your ponies up at the stable and around in the pastures around there but I keep looking at this field of ponies out behind the cabin and there's one that looks so much like my pony Chappie. Vicky, was Chappie still alive at that time? No, Chappie had been deceased for a while at okay. that point. All right. And she asked me a few questions about Chappie and you know, we were figuring out that Chappie had been from Virginia. Well, it turns out that we were able to figure out because of what we knew about Connemara pedigrees and color genetics and the color of the pony I was looking at, and she knew the pedigree of that pony. We figured out that I was standing on the farm where Chappie had been born. And the pony I was looking at would have been a cousin or a relative. They would have come down through the same, I don't remember now, it's been a few years, but great-grandsire probably would have, they would have shared a great But the bloodlines were the same. Right, right. And she told me about the story of when those ponies had been uh, rescued. The people were renting that place at the time, and they had just fallen on some hard times. So my understanding from her story wasn't like a real miserable situation, but it was some people getting together and saying, hey, let's get the ponies out of there and and help help this family uh, get them placed into other places and that that kind of a situation. But I was so I'm getting chills telling you that. Like, oh, my gosh. I was so, so you're, you're reliving that visualization. Yes, when you first I, I can see saw these Chappies. ponies out. In, yeah, in I can see a relative out there in the field. And I thought when I started thinking about this cannot be random, that I was in Estes Park, Colorado, when I had given that photography shoot as a silent auction item. That's where it got won by my friend Susan. Then, you know, fast forward, we're in Virginia. A year or two later, doing the photo shoot, and that's when I learned that I'm standing on the ground in Virginia. I live in Indiana, where my pony was born. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. it was a neat thing. So I got home, and I bet within 24 hours, that song just poured out of me. I remember where I, w- I was sitting on my bed with my guitar in hand and picked some chords that I knew how to play <laughs> and wrote the song. It just you know how that is. You probably, Michael, you've had songs pour out of you before. I bet you have. You picked the right chords. That day, didn't you? Know, I that apparently just, did. That's, that's great how that the feel comes through you and feels natural. I, I was a little bit disappointed when I heard that this song had been done so long ago. I thought you were on the, some writing spurt and all these other songs were coming out. Boom, 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 boom. And then it, when I did find out that this wasn't part of your boom, boom, boom. <sighs> But that came like, later. Yeah, so you got a little uh, twenty year spurt or a little silence time there. Yeah, I love that love that song and the uh, airiness of it, and and uh, always love getting a hold of something that has a lot of space to it, and then it feels like everything's in slow motion that you can just kind of create a uh, mood. And even though I wasn't there on the time that you were in the cabin and how you felt and stuff, but you were, you were showing me how you felt with the uh, chords you chose and the melody you chose and the lyrics you chose. And then once again, it kind of dictates where that, how that song needs to move, you know, and, uh, and to feel like it took its own natural course. I wasn't trying to fool you with the age of that song. (laughs) My first recording session, I brought four songs. 
two were the really old ones, Stars and On the Mountain. And then South Bend, I had written the year before, and then I brought the brand new one, okay. Broken State. So, <laughs> And then you went on a spurt and, and started nailing a bunch of them out. But I just always like when people get in a in a little, maybe I'm maybe because I secretly I, I get jealous when people get in a little spurt and they knock things out. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. It's been a long time since I've had a spurt like that. And so so I think I, I was just I think envious. I was with both of you. We were doing a <laughs> rehearsal for our May 7th show of this year. When I had made a statement to the song that I had played it forever, and I I love the song, and uh, <laughs> and Michael said, "Wait a second, I thought this song is just brand new. Mm-hmm. No, this one's been around for a little while." <laughs> but what's interesting? <laughs> it that, feels new to me. It, it does, but I think here's why, Vicky. Honestly, I think this song was a precursor of things to come, even though it was written years ago, and there was pretty much a lot of silence between that song. And this other series of songs that are mm-hmm. on another universe, I think the soul of the songwriter that you are is reflected in that song. Mm-hmm. That's why it's kind of the birth of you as a songwriter. And I have just now thought of something that all the songs have in common. On the Mountain came to me when I was in a really busy time in my life, career wise, and helping my mom with my dad's dementia, like helping her as a caregiver. And I spent two days in a cabin in silence. I just have thought of that. And then I started adding the silence last, uh, it's been now a year ago, uh, adding about 30 minutes every day. And Michael, that's where the songwriting spurt kind of came for me was, it was almost like when I finally decided to get quiet no matter how busy the rest of my day was, when I added some quiet, it allowed song lyrics to spill out. You know, so put, I just have now thought of it. And that. to put things in context there, Vicki, I mean, like, uh, those who don't know you, you've had just a very enormous professional career that required a lot of time and energy in academia. And so to be able to have that quiet time to, and give yourself permission to become uh, the musician and the songwriter that's reflective in this album, it took that quiet time for you to realize who you really were, mm-hmm. to discover who is Vicky as a musician, who is Vicky as a songwriter. Yeah. And then Michael helped you give birth to these yeah. tunes. It was uh, about 10 months ago, shortly after one of those 30 minutes or so of silence, when I was having this epiphany that for most of my adult life, I've thought of myself as a, I have thought of myself as a musician, mostly a vocalist, but that I could only be a musician when everything else was done. Like I didn't give myself permission to practice, to work on anything, vocals, guitar, memorizing something for a musical I was going to be, you know, whatever it was. I always saved it for the very end when I was tired at the end of the day or a little snippet of a weekend And I've totally flip-flopped that around where I'm allowing a good piece of my day to be music-related and where it feels right. Like, I'm not forcing it into any certain time slot. If a song is coming to me, I sit down and work on it. But what's been interesting to me is my productivity with my clients is increasing as well. Yeah, and your other job and responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the day that you had that epiphany you were making a series of videos over 100 days. You called them 100 Days of Silence, mm-hmm. right? And you would record little... Reflection videos. Yeah, vlogs, video uh, blogs of what you experienced in that day. And I remember the day that you had the epiphany that you could treat your songwriting as a job in its essence, but also, more importantly, you could treat your songwriting as something that it was okay to do and to do it on a daily basis. I remember that day. I remember where we were sitting when you shared that thought with me and that you had put that in your video. Mm-hmm. And it was it was an yeah. epiphany. Those videos are out there on the I have a I have a few different YouTube channels, but that one if you search on Vicky J Maris, you'll find that video. It's one I have in public status. So any, a, anybody a, could get to it? Yeah. Okay. A lot of those videos I do have in unlisted status, but if if you're interested in seeing the, they're all in a playlist, so I'm more than happy to share the playlist with anyone who would like to watch them. 
there. It was an interesting journey. Thanks for sharing the story of that song, because it's just really a cool story. I mean, a unique story. I've got to say one other quick thing. Michael, the day you were working on the mix for On the Mountain, I didn't know you were working on the mix that day. And I had that morning, I had, for some reason, as I call this another one of those synchronicity or uh, just fun little moments of connection, but I had pulled out a polo shirt out of my closet that I probably hadn't worn in two or three years. I remember this. That has a Connemara Pony logo on Mm -hmm. it. And it's from the uh, Region 3 Connemara world. Uh, Region 3 is out on the eastern seaboard of the United States. And I was wearing it that day as I was doing my farm chores and working outside and was heading somewhere on an errand and got a text message from you that said, the mix for On the Mountain is in Dropbox. Mm. And as I was looking at my phone, I glanced at the Connemara logo on my shirt and thought, okay, this has to be another synchronicity yeah. that on the day you're working on the On the Mountain instrument mix, mm-hmm. I'm wearing a shirt celebrating Connemara ponies. And Dick, and- if I recall, wasn't, wasn't that logo like a, a white yeah, it and, looks like my pony. Grant, <laughs> it's Signia. not her, but it looks but, like but, her. I mean, it does. And so, A white jumping, jumping Connemara pony. Yeah. yeah. It says Connemara's yeah. do it all. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Scott Greason, Michael Kelsey, for being on the mics with me as we have conversation about the song On the Mountain. All right. I'm going to close us out with that recording of the practice session of On the Mountain. Michael Kelsey, Scott Greason, and myself on guitars. You'll hear me singing and Mr. Courtney Von Draley on accordion.